Hello guys again. Following with the equivalent system systems, this is another type of questions that you might find. And this time the question asks for two things. The first part says replace the loadings for an equivalent system of force and couple at A. So let me start by doing that. If I want to substitute all of those forces by an equivalent force and moment at the point A, what you have to do is just finding the resultant force. And how do you find the resultant force? By finding the resultant force in X, by finding the resultant force in Y. And once you have these two, then you have to find the couple, meaning the moment at the point A. So let's find the moment at A resultant moment at A. In X, what do you have in X here? The only thing that you have in X is this force, 600 Newton acting in this direction. What about in Y? In Y you have these three forces, meaning negative 200, negative 400, negative 200, and that's going to be equal to 800 Newton. And because when we do, I don't copy it here, but when we do it, we said that this is going to be positive and we said um, I mean, this is going to be positive and this is going to be positive because I get a negative sign but that means that it's acting downward. Once you have these two you can calculate the resultant force by doing square root of 600 square plus 800 square and that will be a thousand Newton. And the other thing that you need to calculate is the angle of this force plot these two values 600 in this direction 800 in this direction complete the box or the parallelogram the resultant force will be this one which is 1000 and now you can calculate this angle if you want the way you calculate that angle is with any trigonometric property that you want to I know you are used to say inverse tangent of adjacent divided by opposite, so 800 divided by 600, and then you can calculate that angle as 53.13 degrees. First part, done. Resultant force, and the way the resultant force is acting. The second one, I mean first part of the first question. The second one is the resultant moment at A. Then we just have to do moment of all of those forces and add them up using superposition. I'm going to say that counterclockwise is positive. So let's start. This force of 200, the force, the line of action of the force passes through the point that I'm studying. If that is the case, that force doesn't produce any moment. It's just a push, not a rotation. So that force doesn't produce moment with respect to the point A. The next force that I found, find is 400, it's a vertical force, so I need the horizontal force between that and the point A, and the horizontal distance is 0 0.5, vertical force, horizontal distance, 0 0.5. The third thing that you do when you study this is studying the sign. So you put your finger wherever the point of the moment is and you apply the force in this direction. You can see the rotation is in this way, like that. And that one is clockwise, so that means that according to our convention, should be negative. What else? The next part is a, the next force is this one, 200, vertical force here horizontal distance between the vertical force and the point A is 1, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, so that is 1, and then apply the force again, put your finger at the point that you want to calculate the moment, apply the force, rotation, clockwise, clockwise, according to our convention, is negative. And last but not least, then we have this force, 600. Now the force is horizontal, meaning the distance has to be vertical between that point and the point A and that distance is 1.5. To study 1.5. To study the rotation, you just put your finger and apply the force. 
Now, keep in mind that if you don't see the rotation with the force applied there, you can translate that force along the line of action and imagine the force was applied here. And the moment that is going to be produced is the same moment. Now you can see perfectly that the rotation is going to be like that and like that. I mean, this is going to be uh, negative as well. So then you can calculate that moment. The resultant moment at A is going to be, uh, it's my calculator, calculator here. So this is 200. This is 200, 400, and this is 900. So 1300, that's going to be 1300. That would be the moment. 1300 Newton meter. This is 900, and this is 200, and this is 200. Yes, 900, 1300 Newton meter. That's the first part of the problem. Now, and of course, this is going to be, uh, we say this clockwise. This will conclude the first question. Now the second part, the problem is kind of telling you, you know something, I don't want the resultant force here, which we calculated. We calculated this force 1000 with this angle here. And we say that we need a moment like this of 1300. Now the second part is I don't want this thing happening like that. What I do want is only one force along the member AB. So that means that the force is not going to be applied at A. It's going to be applied somewhere here, somewhere. Remember this force we calculated and it was 1000 and the distance is 600, the distance of the horizontal component 600 and the vertical component here was 800 and this angle was theta. Now the second part of the problem what it's telling you is I want to place this force somewhere and I don't know what somewhere is, so I'm gonna call that somewhere D from the point A. And when I put that force over there, it has to produce the same moment as the moment that we calculated before. Remember, we calculated this moment of 1300 Newton. It's not that I'm going to put that moment there, but the location of this force at that distance D has to produce that moment over there. And if you follow what I just told you, and you translate that into equation is that that moment has to be equal to this component because this component passes through that point it's not producing anything or through that line so it's going to be equal to that 600 600 multiplied by this distance d and then from there you can solve for d and say that 1300 divided by 600 and that distance D will be 1300 divided by 600, 2.16 periodic near. The second answer will be, I need to place the resultant force that I calculated before in the same direction that I calculated before at a distance of 2.16 periodic measure from the point A. I hope you like it. Thank you for watching and keep watching guys.